Hey, welcome back. We're almost done with our animation. Let's check out some cool features and important notes to make sure we're all set for the final render. To begin, let's learn about markers in your project. Make sure that you haven't selected any layer before creating a marker. Markers can help us to create a note at important points in time. For example, we know that our animation ends here, at the second number 13. So I can create a note to myself, that this is the point up until I need to render my project. And I can do it by creating a marker. For this, click on the small icon found here, on the right side of the timeline. Once you click it, a new marker will be created at the point in time where the time indicator is placed. Now, double click on the marker and type, end. This will help you identify where the animation ends. This step is optional, and you don't have to do it. But it's good for you to know about this cool function. Alright, and now let's move on to the rendering part. The first thing we need to do before rendering any project is to ensure we are not rendering unnecessary parts of the animation. For this, we need to shorten the work area to the moment when the animation ends. You can do this manually, or press the end key. As a result, After Effects will only render the scene up to the end of the work area. The next thing we must ensure before rendering is that all our designs are of the highest quality. We can achieve this by using the Collapse function. So, let's enter this composition and apply the Collapse function to all the precomps and all the layers within those precomps. Because right now, if I zoom in, you can see that the objects in the scene are a bit blurry and not sharp. They are pixelated. Alright, let's start with the text composition. Move the time indicator forward in time to see all the layers. Now, click here to see the collapse function. And apply it to all these layers so we can see all of them at their highest quality. Now let's go back to the main composition and apply collapse to all the precomps. We don't need to re-enter and select the layers for the letter A and the character. We have already done that at the beginning of the lesson. But we do need to activate the collapse for this precomp. Then, activate the collapse for the rest of the precomps. And now, we can set the preview to fit and make sure the animation still looks good after we collapse the precomps. Once we've done that, let's head back to the logo animation comp and apply the collapse there too. Click here to see the function and activate it. Now, let's take a quick look to ensure the collapse function didn't affect our animation. Everything looks good. Finally, we are ready to render the scene. So, to render the composition we are currently in, we can go to Composition and choose Add to Render Queue. Alternatively, we can use the shortcut Ctrl-M. Let's use the shortcut and press Ctrl-M. Now, we are in the Render Queue panel of After Effects. Here, we can see which composition we are rendering, which is this composition. Now, in Output Mode, we can select the file format we need. We will choose H.264, 40 Mbps, which is a high-resolution MP4 file. Then, we need to choose where to render the video. So click here, and let's find the folder that we created for this lesson. Let's choose to save it in the Renders folder. Now, make sure the name is good. The name that appears here is the same as the name of the composition we are rendering. Next, we can press Save. And finally, click on the render button. Now let's wait a couple of minutes. Keep in mind that the animation's rendering time is not the same for everyone. Your computer's power is what determines how fast or slow it will be for you. Some of you may need to be more patient, while others might see it finish in no time. Once the render is complete, to see the render, we can either find the folder manually or click on the link here in the output mode. This will take us directly to the folder where the video is rendered. Let's open the video and see how it looks. Awesome work! You can now show off the animation you made on your social media platforms and your portfolio website. If you like the course, it would be awesome if you could give it a rating based on your experience. And don't forget to leave some feedback so I can know if you learned anything cool from the course or not. Alright, and now let's return to our project and learn how to render the animation without any background. 
This is useful when we need to integrate the logo animation into different backgrounds, or when we have a video playing in the background. Let's see how it's done. First of all, we can close this and exit the render panel. Now, let's go back to our main composition and turn off the background here. So, select the BG layer and turn it off. If you don't see the transparent background and you do see the gray background, that's perfectly fine. This gray background is not real. It's just a preview screen background. So now, let's press Ctrl M again. This time, click here and change the format to QuickTime. Next, in the Format Options, select Animation. And now, in Channels, we need to choose RGB plus Alpha. This tells After Effects to render this animation without a background, meaning with a transparent background. Now let's choose where to render the animation. Let's also render it to our Renders folder. This time, add underscore Alpha, or underscore and OBG, at the end of the file name, so you can differentiate between the files. Now press save and render. Once again, let's wait a couple of minutes. All right, let's see what we got here. Don't freak out if the video looks a bit choppy. It's just a file format thing. To check this video and ensure that it has been rendered without a background, we can drag it into our project. So first, we can go back to our logo animation comp. Now open the render folder and drag the MOV file into the project. Let's turn off all the layers. And there you have it. We got an animation without a background. And of course, you can also find the file in the project panel. And since we don't really need this file in the project, we can select it and press backspace to delete it from here. Let's also delete it from the project panel. And let's turn back on all the layers in our scene. You can also close this panel. And now, let's learn how to organize our project in the project panel before we close it. It's super important to keep your project organized in the project panel so that you can easily find everything. This will save you a lot of time when you return to work on the project later. Having an organized project is also essential when working with other animators. They'll need to access your project, and you want them to be able to navigate it easily. And if clients ask for the project file, it's much easier to share it with them when it's organized. So, we can organize our project by creating folders. Just like the folder that popped up when we imported the logo from Illustrator, and the folder that appeared when we created the solid and the adjustment layer, that we have here in our composition. Alright, to create a new folder, ensure that nothing is selected in the project panel. Next, click on the icon to create a new folder. Now, name it Assets, and press Enter to confirm. After that, drag all the graphic assets, including the folder with the logo layers, character layer, and solids folder, into this newly created folder. Now, let's create another folder. When you're creating a new folder, make sure you don't select anything in the project panel. If you do, the new folder will be created inside the selected folder which is not what we want. So, just double check that nothing is selected before you create the new folder. All right, let's click here and name this folder precomps. Now, let's drag all the precomps we created during the project into this folder, except for the main composition. We can tag the main composition with a different color from the other precomps. Next, let's put these two precomps into the folder. And this one as well. Okay, we're almost done here. Let's close all the precomps we opened and save the project by pressing Ctrl S. You can also turn off the grid from the drop down menu, or just hit the apostrophe key. And now, let's not forget to close the Illustrator files too. Now, we can close this After Effects project. That's it for our first lesson. Hope you had fun, and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson, 
when we will create a funky logo animation for a made-up YouTube channel for motion designers and learn how to create an advanced stretch text animation. It's going to be awesome, so see you there. But before you dive into the next lesson, I highly recommend that you take a 10-minute break. Get up from your chair, do some light stretching, and drink a glass of water. This will help you to recharge your brain for the next lesson.